You can make a container pond out of anything that will hold water, but the best materials are stone, metal, fibreglass and ceramic. Many people also use plastic, like a plastic bucket, but after being exposed to the elements such as the sun for a while, plastic can get brittle so it won't last as long. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog. And making a container pond is easy, but there are a few things that you really need to know before you start pouring the water in. So I'm going to talk to Jane Beadle, who's making a container pond out of an agricultural drinking trough. So Jane, what made you decide to get a small pond? I think I've all, always said when we've been talking about the garden is that I try to make it as wildlife friendly as possible, given that I don't have a lawn, but I've got a lot of planting beds for a very small space. And I thought the next step was to have a pond. And occasionally I get a newt hiding under the shed or a pot that's been sitting there all winter or a, a frog and a toad. And I'm not quite sure how they get into a walled garden, however they do. Well, I don't know whether I'll get pond skaters. I don't know what I'll get. But even if the birds just come to drink out of it, I think it's a really good addition to a small garden. And you've actually got an agricultural drinking trough, haven't you, made of galvanised metal? Yes, I was incredibly fortunate. We had been looking to buy them and they're relatively inexpensive. I wanted something long and quite narrow because of the space that it was going into and I, I looked at cattle or animal or livestock drinking troughs that you would see in a field and they were about for about a six foot one brand new they're about 140 pounds whatever that is in any other currencies and I just happened to say to a farmer you don't by any chance have one, do you, that I could have? And, and I feel incredibly fortunate because you can buy them on reclamation site websites and things like that. And they do cost you a pretty penny because they have a lovely patina to them and they're a little bit battered and they look a little bit aged, which suits my garden. So yes, it was gifted to me, which was very exciting. Many people ask how deep your container pond needs to be and really any depth of water, however shallow, is valuable to wildlife. But if you want to keep fish in your pond and to create a little ecosystem, it's generally agreed that sort of 12 inches, 30 centimetres is probably about a minimum depth. Get your pond into position because you're not going to be able to move it once it's full of water. And then put a layer of gravel on the base. You don't need to add soil or compost and in fact it's a very bad idea to do so because the soil or the compost will actually change the nutrients in the water and you're more likely to get things like algae. I know normal ponds have soil in them but actually in a container pond you shouldn't have ordinary soil and certainly your plants won't need it. Now one thing I know you were quite keen to avoid was mosquitoes. So what's your anti-mosquito strategy? Well, I have a couple. You told me that if I had running water and it was a certain depth, I wouldn't get them. And it's not that I don't trust you, Alexandra, <laughs> <laughs> except I really hate being bitten by mosquitoes. So we are going to put in a couple of small fish, just a couple of small fish. So hopefully they will feast on the mosquito larvae and not too much on any other things that I want to survive. So that's three things. One is it's deeper than 12 inches. I think two feet is the absolute ideal. The other is mosquitoes don't breed in running water so you put a pond pump in. Yes. And then number three is you're going to add some fish. So yes. those mosquitoes really haven't got much of a chance have they? And then of course the other thing is is that because you designed your garden and it's a typical town garden in terms of shape and size, of course putting a pond in may reorganising some things. So can you talk us through that? Yes we had an enormous barbecue which I suppose when the family were at home worked okay and really I don't think we used it last summer at all and it's just taking up space. Um, you, you get used to seeing something in the space don't you and I thought it would be a perfect space for a pond and that's where the pond is going. It's possibly a little shadier than ideal but I am limited for positions for it. I possibly could have put a pond somewhere into one of the flower beds so you just have to take advantage of what you've got and I'm hoping that if I choose my pond plants carefully uh, although I have very little knowledge of pond plants then things will thrive in that space. When the children were very small we had a barrel pond it was a tiny again tiny garden and a, a tiny pond and 
it was in a reasonably shady spot and it did just fine so I'm hoping that we'll be all right. And because you had where you had to put it the plug for the pump was already there wasn't it so you've had to pull it a bit away from the wall and then you're going to cover that up with planting is that right? Um, that's it, that's exactly right so ideally I would have wanted it much closer to the wall because then I possibly would have had a, a pipe coming out of the wall and dropping down like a little fountain or something but because we needed to get to the plug and therefore be able to turn things on and off or use it we had to move it a bit further away from the wall which leaves a little bit of a gap but it's not a particularly pretty bit of wall it's quite bare so the space behind will give me the opportunity to plant something that will come up the wall and shield a bit of cable that I've currently got there for some lighting shield the cable coming into the pond I'll then have to disguise it as it's going out of the pond but yes I mean everything is a compromise isn't it in a small space it's always a juggle when it comes to choosing plants for container ponds, firstly think about how much sun or shade your container pond is in. It's just like choosing plants for an ordinary border. The next thing you have to remember is what depth pond plants need to be planted at. Some plants are called marginal plants and they really only just want the water around their roots. But in a container pond you've got a sort of flat sided thing so you haven't got that shallow beach that you would have in an ordinary pond. However, you can have marginal plants by placing a brick or bricks into the container pond and then placing your marginal plant in its pot on top of that. Other plants actually like to be stood in deep water so you can lower the pot in and stand them on the bottom of the pond and others float on the top but check what size they're going to grow to because you don't want a 40 foot water lily trying to grow in your tiny container pond. Possibly the most important plants are the oxygenating plants and these are sort of like a container pond seaweed. They come in little branches probably about the size of my hand. They're tied together with a little piece of pebble and you just throw them into the pond and then they'll multiply there. Oxygenating plants really keep your water in much better condition and you're much less likely to get algae so don't miss that step out. I must confess that I have actually taken some oxygenating plants out of my own pond which I created eight years ago and given some of those to Jane. In the past it was completely normal practice to swap pond plants and tadpoles between ponds. It's now considered that it is more likely to lead to disease and it's not recommended. However, my pond has been here in my garden for eight years. I haven't introduced anything new to it and it seems healthy. So I'm going to take the risk and I'm going to admit it to you. And also when something straight sided like that is that creatures need to be able to get in and they need to be able to get out and so you've been gifted some rocks I think. How did you find putting the rocks in? Were they very heavy and difficult? They, yes, so the rocks that we were gifted again by the very friendly farmer uh, are incredibly heavy. In fact when we were carrying them out of the car a younger neighbour offered to drop everything and come and help us. It is so that creatures can get in and out because we know that things that do if the right word is pupate in the water, like a dragonfly for instance, they then need to climb up something to get out. Now I'm hoping that will be up a bit of planting, but if say a hedgehog accidentally got in there, we want the hedgehog to get out, we don't want it to drown in the water. Instead of having a, a perfectly flat surface of water, I'm going to have them sticking out of the water a bit. Where they're positioned in the pond, then underwater it will be a good height for some of the more marginal plants I'm going to put in and yes to, to let froglets if I have any climb out and get out and things like that and also birds and bees and things need places to perch and and drink I hope so mm. yes I hope so we have a bird feeder quite close to it as well so I'm hoping it's a sort of all-in-one restaurant for wildlife I think you can eat and have a drink and hop off somewhere as well and of course the thing is you're going to fill it with tap water and the ideal is really to fill it with rainwater but you haven't got a butt. So you're going to fill it with tap water now and you're going to let it sit for a, a couple of days, a week or so, just to let the chemicals evaporate off? Yes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it for a couple of weeks. I had to order my pond plants online because locally, although I went searching, couldn't really find anything I particularly wanted. So I've ordered some which are coming in a couple of weeks which absolutely perfect because I'm going to let the water just settle and sort itself out. It's from the mains, obviously don't do it from a tap that goes through a water softener because you will make it 
saltier than you think. There are more wildlife friendly things you can do for your garden in our wildlife friendly playlist at the end of this video and thank you for watching. Goodbye!